Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8. Today we're going to be talking about the latest episode. This is part one of the two-part season finale of Season 8 of The Flash. This episode is tied to a negative book one or negative part one, and I love this episode, and I'm sure you guys did. So much went down, we have so much to break down, so please be sure to go nowhere. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so like I mentioned, this episode had so much going on. Like, I really do mean so much in the greatest sense. This is a proper great Flash episode, full of mystery, full of intrigue, and it keeps you on the edge of your seat throughout the entire runtime. And man, that ending with a reverse flash, we have to talk about this. But first things first, we'll be going through the episode chronologically. And we'll be skipping and kind of like recapping about some stuff and theorizing about what this could mean. And the impact of certain things on the future storylines that are going to be appearing on the show. But for now, let's start with Bart and Nora at the start of the episode as they play a futuristic VR game in 2049. So we meet them again. It's nice to see Bart and Nora back, even though they don't play like a huge part in this episode. But they are interrupted by a call by their mum, Future Iris. However, as she's in this phone call, the literal hologram disappears and Iris disappears too. And then out of nowhere, present Iris appears. She has been placed there supposedly by Dion and by the Steel Force and so she just like randomly popped up in 2049 and it's supposedly this is kind of like a prison because the Steel Force is keeping Iris in 2049 in this spot on purpose so that he has access to her when he wants it and so I think that's one of the reasons why she's been popping around to these different places but they actually go on to figure out with the help of Joan that Iris was infected by a negative tachyon. And this is thanks to negative Dion, who used normal Dion to get to Iris and basically have this sacrifice and have this kind of leverage without revealing his full deal. Because remember, normal Dion, he's been put out of action at least for a little bit. And the Dion that we're seeing and we've seen recently has been negative Dion. He is a corrupted version of the Steel Force. But yeah, so that's what happens at the start of the episode. Then Mina in the next scene gets a flash suit. It's black and it's very cool. I think it looks very nice. Not so sure about the cow, however, I think later in some other shots it looks much better. Also the running, eh. But, you know, they're not always the best at the running scenes, especially when they're standing still on the treadmill. It's very hard to do to make it look believable. But anyway, so Barry is training Mina. She goes crazy because she can't get to Mark 2. And... Thorn, the good Thorn, questions her why is she pushing herself so fast and why is she like doing all of this in the first place and she reveals basically that she didn't want this in the first place, she wanted to basically use meta powers for the good of other people and this was actually Thorn's dream to become a speedster to be able to help people just like the Flash. But anyway, so Mina goes outside, she runs off to another place like a back alley in Central City and she's freaking out by some bins. There is a couple like weird jump cuts here at the start of the scene where the lighting changes. I guess, you know, they just filmed it at different times and the lighting was different. But it just made for a little bit of a weird transition in my opinion. That's just like a tiny nitpick about the filmmaking in this episode. But Barry shows up and they talk and Barry actually reveals himself to Mina and he gets through to her and this is mainly by telling her that he is a normal person by revealing his identity that he works as a badge and he works for the cops and that is just like any other job that someone could get in the city and so it just proves that Barry is a great hero and it's not just about who he is in his personal life you don't have to be this absolute greatest person to be a hero. It's just what you got to strive for, I guess. But what a moment. I love that scene. Best reveal of Barry's identity in a long while. It felt totally natural and was not forced. That is a big problem with Barry's reveals recently of his identity because he goes around willy-nilly revealing his identity. And it hasn't felt like... It was done on purpose for a while, like they just kind of thought of it like, oh yeah, this would be a cool twist if we told 
this person and this person and this person about Barry's identity, but there is never any kind of big consequences. But here you have the motivation of Mina seeing Barry's face, seeing who he actually is. It inspires her. But then shortly after this, Negative Dion comes and he actually goes to Lian Yu and he kills Armageddon Reverse Flash, who's been locked up all this time. We've seen him in the past two episodes. And so in order to have everything, it causes him to lose his life. And at this moment, I was completely shocked. I thought this offer would be something completely different. This was not expected at all. And so the Reverse Flash is dead, or so it seems. And so Barry finds Reverse Flash's body in Lian Yu after Chester gets a spike on one of the Star Labs satellites that Dion was there. And so the main question is, why did Dion kill him? What's his true plan? And why did he talk all of this big stuff about him becoming everything that he's ever wanted? Well, we find that out later in the episode, but let's continue from here. We have a brief interlude in this episode with the Cecile storyline. So Cecile reveals to Joe at the house that she's been vigilanteing recently and that she can take people's powers now. So this is very curious because Cecile's powers have no limits. And I think that is a bad thing because she is constantly adapting and she's constantly changing. And she doesn't just have like one type of kinetic power, like psychokinetic power where she can, you know, read people's minds or she can feel their emotions. No, she's just so powerful that she can feel anything and she can use telepathy. Nothing is beyond reach and I really, really don't buy into this story. It seems like with the top returning and everything like that, it's all just a big play to level her up and make her the supposed strongest meta in Central City. Although I still really don't buy that because just the way that she acts, like it doesn't seem like she's all powerful. Yes, she's clearly very powerful right now, but I don't know if it's a good storyline to go down. I really don't like what they're doing with Cecile, if I'm completely honest. This was probably my biggest nitpick in this episode, along with the forces and some of them. But we'll talk about that in a minute. So Eobard and Mina are confronted by the negative forces, who all return apart from the negative speed force because Barry destroyed it when he took away Reverse Flash's powers in Armageddon. But the main question I have to ask is, how do these negative forces all exist? Because I thought that the Reverse Flash manufactured the negative Speed Force and therefore the Speed Force wouldn't be like a living being or wouldn't be, you know, even possibly able to adapt into a living being. However, it seems like this is true and same for all the Reverse of the normal forces. And so I don't think this actually makes much sense if I'm looking at it just from the fact that, you know, negative speed force was something supposed to be man-made. And it's clear that it was man-made because that's what we saw in the last episode. But then I guess you could argue it does have a mind of its own. And I do have to say the return of Bashir and the other force wasn't like the best return because I feel like they are still really cringe and the main thought that went through my mind was, oh, so we're doing the Forces again, are we? Because, you know, everyone hated the Forces storyline. I have to admit, this was much better because this was cram-packed into a great episode. There was so much going on that we didn't have all the time to just focus on them. However, they did play a substantial part in the episode. And so, yeah, I'm just not a big fan. I think they're a bit cringy. They say some cringy lines. I don't really like the way that they're written. But luckily, Barry comes to the rescue as Mina and Iobard are confronted by the negative forces, and he is just about powerful enough to save Iobard from being killed, and also them attacking Mina, and he's able to do that all while being stuck in time by the Steel Force, and that just proves how much Barry has leveled up, and so Barry's speed after this, after they've disappeared, is completely drained. And then out of nowhere, just before they leave, the forces that is, they say, you are not the Avatar, just you being here makes us weak. This line is an obvious reference to what is going on, and the fact that they want to either destroy all of the rest of the forces, or specifically the last negative speed force, or they want to rebuild the negative speed force. And that's where Iris and the good version of Thorn comes in, as well as Eobard Thorn 
from Lee and Yu. But just the fact that they say you're not the Avatar, I got so confused. I was like, what show am I watching? Am I watching The Last Airbender or The Legend of Korra? That is just a reference to you Avatar fans. Also, if you want to see Avatar videos from new films that they're releasing, as well as the new TV show that's coming, please be sure to let me know in the comments below. Just a random thing that I wanted to bring up because I'm a huge Avatar fan. But anyway, talking of speedsters in general, because, you know, we got Mina, who is a new speedster. Well, from 2049, Nora returns to the present day. She's able to briefly help out basically explain what's going on with Iris and tell Barry that Iris is still alive and she's in 2049 but she's currently trapped so that's why she's time traveled back in time and she's here. But meanwhile Caitlin gets on with her experiment with Mark, she goes into the pod, she could reactivate potentially Frost inside her own mind and Mark is helping all while doing this. and. Do I think this is actually going to happen? I think it is, to be honest. Like, I don't see them stopping it. Like, they've teased it too much as of right now. That I feel we're going to see Frost in some way, even if it's not in a physical form for a while. But that's something on Caitlyn's to-do list. But first, to get her back inside her mind. Okay, so back with the main storyline. Barry comes up with a way to stop the negative forces. And... It's basically that Mina is going to share her powers and turn Thorn into a speedster, basically splitting their powers in half, which is very, very cool. But their connection stops Thorn from actually being overtaken by the negative speed force. Because knowing Thorn, he's obviously going to have tendencies that his past versions of himself had, even if he's not aware of it. But that connection that he has to Mina is so strong that it beats everything else. And so they don't really have to worry much about being overtaken until the very end because that was completely out of nowhere. But meanwhile, Allegra, Cecile and Chester hold off the forces who are incoming on the rest of the team. And so Barry, Mina and the good reverse flash played by Matt Letcher show up in time to fight them. Barry's able to build up a huge surge of lightning after the help of his two teammates only for it to not hit the forces. But Dion teleports Iris from 2049 to the present right in that very spot where the lightning is heading towards and it does in fact hit her and it hits her with full force. It lasts for a long time. Iris knocks over. Is she dead? Is she alive? Who knows? We're going to have to wait for the season 8 finale coming next week. I really love that ending. I think it's a great cliffhanger. And... Iris actually disappears into absolutely nothing. And so Iris's energy, which is the same kind of Steel Force green energy that we previously seen with her and the Steel Force, Iris's energy goes straight into Thorn. He starts shrieking with pain, and this is the good Thorn, I have to clarify that. And so suddenly his red lightning returns and it's kind of coursing all over his body, and he begins to rip his face apart. And I'm like at this point watching. A few hours ago, I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, how is this a flash? How is this allowed? But basically, Matt Letcher's version of Reverse Flash rips his face off and reveals underneath his skin that there is Tom Cavanaugh's Reverse Flash who is fully suited up inside of him and steps out of his body. And so that version of Reverse Flash from Armageddon is reborn again. And because of the negative tachyon particles inside a virus, it seems when that hit him, he was able to be charged with those negative particles and that's somehow how he's able to be reborn because of the particles. And so is the good reverse flash dead? Well, it seems so. And Mina is absolutely distraught. She screams whilst this is happening. But wow, this was like a great ending to the episode and really teased and makes us all very excited for what's to come in the season finale next week. I have to say the quality is definitely up this season. I really like the last few episodes, especially since the return of Reverse Flash. Those are always the best stories. And this was a really solid episode, like a 9.5 out of 10. I would say my main nitpick is the logic behind Cecile's powers, but that's an ongoing thing. And then also the forces returning and them just being a little bit cringy at time with their dialogue. But 
that is about it for this video guys if you did enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future dctv videos also click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video but for now i'll catch you guys later goodbye I see red.